What is zero point energy, and how could it change the world? It is the energy of the vacuum, which in quantum field theory is defined not as empty space but as the ground state of the fields. In cosmology, the vacuum energy is one possible explanation for the cosmological constant. A related term is zero point field, which is the lowest energy state of a particular field. Energy will never cease to be a concern for human beings, so long as our species plans to keep growing and expanding. There's no shortage of scientists, and engineers trying to come up with solutions that might help us avoid a catastrophic energy shortage. Electric power is everywhere present in unlimited quantities, and can drive the world's machinery without the need for coal, oil, or gas. Nikola Tesla Some of these ideas seem pretty feasible, such as switching to renewables like wind, and solar. Some are incredibly far-fetched, and probably impossible, like cold fusion. And then there are some ideas which are downright bonkers, but if true, could essentially change everything we know, and love about human civilization. Zero-point energy, also known as ground state energy, could be the greatest gift the quantum world can ever give us. It's a byproduct of the fact that subatomic particles don't really behave like single particles, but like waves constantly flitting between different energy states. This means even the seemingly empty vacuum of space is actually a roiling sea of virtual particles fluctuating in and out of existence, and all those fluctuations require energy. If there's as much energy in those fluctuations as some, though definitely not all, physicists believe, and if we could ever learn how to tap into this phenomenon, we would gain access to an unparalleled source of energy. Dear John, because the war in space race is heating up, I felt you should be aware of several factors as you, and I schedule our Skype talk. Remember, our non-violent eta from the contiguous universe are helping us bring zero-point energy to Earth. They will not tolerate any forms of military violence on Earth, or in space. The following information in italics was shared with me by my colleague Carol Rosine, who worked closely for several years with Wernher von Braun before his death. Carol, and I have worked on the Treaty on the Prevention of the Placement of Weapons in Outer Space, attached for your convenience. Dr. Edgar Mitchell to Joan Podster, from Wikileaks. Zero point energy could power the planet with the strength of multiple suns, making it easy for us to solve Earth's energy problems forever, or to travel beyond the solar system and take our place among the stars. However, we can only guess how much energy is actually contained in the vacuum, with legendary physicists in fierce disagreement on this point. Richard Feynman and John Wheeler calculated the zero-point radiation of the vacuum was so powerful that even a small cup of it would be enough to set all of Earth's oceans to a boil. But Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity suggests zero-point radiation would gravitate, spreading out throughout the universe, and be mitigated to a weak power. Simply put, we don't know enough about the universe to figure out whether zero-point energy, vacuum energy, really is a bombastic fountain of staggering power. There is another way, whether it's wormholes, or warping space, there's got to be a way to generate energy so that you can pull it out of the vacuum, and the fact that they're here shows us that they found a way. Jack Kasher, PhD, Professor Emeritus of Physics, University of Nebraska. Let's hypothesize vacuum energy is real, and it's spectacular and we could maybe one day learn how to tap into it for energy. What would this look like, and what could we do with it? Perhaps the clearest application would be super-fast space flight, the kind that could take you across the solar system in mere hours, or minutes. NASA scientists have looked into developing batteries, and engines which could theoretically produce a gargantuan amount of energy by harnessing a zero-point energy system based on a notion in quantum mechanics called the Casimir effect. This effect is small, but if there's a way to observe, 
and intervene with these very small scale forces, they could work as a potential source of energy for allowing spacecraft to move through space. There have been many different groups that pitched different ideas, but perhaps the most reasonable findings have come out of NASA's Eagle Works Laboratories, which claims to have successfully tested a quantum vacuum plasma thruster. This Q thruster, as outlined by a study that passed peer review last year, takes advantage of the Casimir effect to create propulsion. In such a device, thrust is created using particles pushing off a vacuum. Nevertheless, it's not quite clear whether this could work in a real, applicable setting, nor can the paper's authors dismiss concerns about experimental errors. Many more trials, and rounds of validation would be needed to really illustrate that a Q-thruster is viable. Vacuums generally are thought to be voids, but Hendrik Casimir believed these pockets of nothing do indeed contain fluctuations of electromagnetic waves. He suggested that two metal plates held apart in a vacuum could trap the waves, creating vacuum energy that could attract, or repel the plates. As the boundaries of a region move, the variation in vacuum energy, zero-point energy leads to the Casimir effect. Recent research done at Harvard University, and Vrij University in Amsterdam and elsewhere has proved the Casimir effect correct. Scientific American Com. 2009 post with title. Research in a Vacuum, DARPA tries to tap elusive Casimir effect for breakthrough technology. These are not just French scientists with science fiction ideas. They are mainstream ideas being published in mainstream physics journals, and being taken seriously by mainstream military, and NASA type funders. I've been taken out on aircraft carriers by the Navy, and shown what it is we have to replace if we have new energy sources to provide new fuel methods. Dr. Harold D. Puthoff It's a bit strange to think that centuries after the idea of an ether permeating through the world was debunked, physics has come around to say that perhaps there is a universal energy stuck in the empty space all over. It would be a mighty grand thing to find ourselves grasping at that vacuum for an unheralded amount of energy. But that's all pretty far away from humanity's reach for now. Space is actually not empty, and it's full of energy. The energy in space is not trivial there's a lot of it and we can actually calculate how much energy there is in that space, and that reality might actually come out of it. Everything we see is actually emerging from that space. Scale Unification, a universal scaling law for organized matter, published research by Nassim Haram, Michael Hizen, and Elizabeth Rouska, an American physicist. She is a former researcher with the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, the Stanford Research Institute, and NASA. For the foreseeable future, it's probably best to continue banking on solar, and wind as acceptable sources of energy, no? The quote comes from Paramahamsa Duari, inventor of what's called the reactionless AC synchronous generator. A century from now, it will be well known that the vacuum of space which fills the universe is itself the real substratum of the universe. Vacuum in a circulating state becomes matter. The electron is the fundamental particle of matter, and is a vortex of vacuum with a vacuumless void at the center, and it is dynamically stable. The speed of light relative to vacuum is the maximum speed that nature has provided, and is an inherent property of the vacuum. Vacuum is a subtle fluid unknown in material media. Vacuum is massless, continuous, non-viscous, and incompressible and is responsible for all the properties of matter. And that vacuum has always existed, and will exist forever. Then scientists, engineers, and philosophers will bend their heads in shame knowing that modern science ignored the vacuum in our chase to discover reality for more than a century.